Hey everybody, uh, it's Bust with Battles with Bust number 42. Uh, today we are going to be jumping into another gauntlet. And so, uh, right from the get-go, we're going to be playing uh, the Pirates Burn deck, the Darius Nar Overwhelm Burn deck, and we're going to be playing the Elise Burn deck. We're bringing all the Burn decks out of the format today. And so, uh, we won't be doing gameplay guides on these decks. If you want to scroll back through the channel... Uh, we've certainly done one for Pirates, and we've done one for Darius Nar. I uh, haven't made one for Elise, but uh, that more in-depth content is out there. And so where I'm really kind of approaching this video from is, you know, since the beginning of Best of Three, people have done shit like this, right? This is nothing novel or nothing new uh, in terms of us bringing three burn decks to the, to the event, right? That's nothing uh, compelling, <laughs> you know? I, I don't want to toot my own horn for my brilliance, but uh, bringing three burn decks is nothing new. But I, I think the next step beyond that is kind of evaluating uh, in the meta where this kind of archetype uh, lineup can be good, right? We, we've recently encountered a lot of people doing this stuff to where you play like one aggro deck, one mid-range deck, and one control deck. And I, I think that just sounds uh, pretty terrible for the most part. Uh, because, you know, if your matchups and lineup is favored to beat up on control decks, then you, you just let the control deck stick around, right? You never have to be like, oh shit, he's got, you know, kind of multiples of the same deck coming at me, right? If you look at our our previous video where we're running uh, this, like, Demacia-based lineup with the Stony Suppressors and the early game challengers and the rallies and the unit boosting, it's like, yes, playing um, Misfortune Scouts is different than playing uh, the Poppy Rally deck, but there's like lots of the core of the deck that are very similar. And so uh, if you think back to, you know, about a month or so ago, to where we had the NAR meta, the Pokey Stick meta, whatever you want to call it, it was very realistic that you could jump into a best of three and then be playing against three decks that play Pokey Stick. And so is that like a, a, a you know, sort of scenario where you want to be playing Teemo? right? Probably not. That's probably a, a pretty shitty meta to be playing Teemo in. Uh, and so as far as the burn decks, we really don't want to be playing against stuff like Vile Feast, and we don't want to play too much against things like Make It Rain. We don't want to play against Withering Whale. Like, just these things that, you know, removal spells with drains tend to be pretty shitty. AoE removal spells tend to be pretty bad for us as well. And, and so where this, uh, this kind of idea is going is the, the decks that tend to be good against us these days are anything with Aphelios in it, right? These Aphelios kind of controly decks that are able to generate a, uh, a lifesteal moon weapon tend to give us a bit of trouble, but, right, there's only going to be one Aphelios deck. They're not bringing multiple copies of Aphelios. And so uh, the same kind of thing applies to the U Yordles in Arms Lulu Fizz decks as to where uh, not too many lineups going to be bringing multiple copies of Yordles in Arms. And those that do are pretty similar in content. And so, oh my gosh, got to get a, about to get catted here. But uh, that, that's, you know, not a thing that I think we're going to really run into. And so I, I think we should be uh, pretty safe in this meta to run this concept of three burn decks uh, and not run into too many uh, lineups that have like two and three decks that we're just like, oh shit, we can't ban enough out of this. And so uh, hopefully this will go well for us. We're about to jump in. Uh, in terms of the decks themselves, I do like to stop and talk about the things that uh, may be a little odd or different than what you've been seeing. Uh, here, I, I'm the only odd thing about this deck is we're just down to playing the one copy of Gangplank. Uh, I'm not even convinced that the burn deck should be playing any copies of him, but I do still like having the kind of late game closing power out of Gangplank. Otherwise, uh, pretty straightforward in terms of the, uh, of the Pirate's burn deck. Over here with Darius Nar, uh, the thing that you will be seeing odd out of this one is the inclusion of Runeweaver. Uh, I really like having these draws to where we play a two drop into a two drop into a troll chant, uh, and the Runeweaver just fits into that draw quite nicely. And then it's also extremely relevant uh, being able uh, to say put an overwhelm fragment onto a Nar or giving a quick attack to one of your dudes, or you know, it's it's not tough to find scenarios to where. Uh, the additional uh, usage of the of the Reforge is quite powerful. And so I like to take some of the more mid-rangey aspects out of the deck, uh, include the two Rune Weavers here. Not seeing too much of that. Don't play uh, more than one copy of Nar either. He's just too slow. You find a lot of games to where uh, you can't find um, a, a space to actually even play. Oh my gosh, come on, dude. Come on. You want to be on the internet? Or you just want to put your claws in me and walk away? <laughs> I'm not pausing the video. I'm just gonna wait. You can you can fast forward like thirty seconds. Fucking cats, man. I love the dude, but 
Oh my gosh. <laughs> All right. And anyways, the last one, uh, this is a, a pretty stock Elise Barn deck. This is one of the decks I'm not uh, uh, super, super familiar with. I haven't played tons and tons and tons of Elise Barn, but I think we'll uh, be able to, to navigate this pretty reasonably. And uh, I'm not too comfortable in coming out here and making too many edits to it. So just a fairly stock list coming from this. Here we go. Here's the dum dum. You want to see the kitty? Say, what up, guys? What up? I made it to the internet. Only stuck my claws in bust like eight times. <laughs> oh, he's a delightful little fella. But anyways, uh, before we can get started, before we go, we do have to pay the pay-to-win price. And I went through and looked through all the decks. The only common or rare we have left is Stalking Shadows. And so, look at that. Get it right in here, and good to go. So the price has been paid. All of our commons, all of our rares are ready to go. Let's go to this whole gauntlet thing. Jump on in. Blazing them on up with the pirates, some Darius Nar, and some Decimate. So you guys probably just be here for another five minutes or so. Yeah, <laughs> these these games shouldn't take that long. I hope you weren't hope you weren't hoping for a long one today. Okay, so uh, amongst these decks, not like tons of really problematic stuff. I'm fine with uh, battling against uh, Timo Caitlin. Like the, the Caitlin based control decks can be a bit of a problem. The, the Timo Caitlin deck tends to be more uh, Timo heavy, so I'm okay ish with that running around. Uh, I'm going to come out here and just ban. Uh, the the combo deck. I, I don't really want to face this. These uh, Riven decks tend to be able to just get like enough width to where you can't deal enough damage and then go oopsies I hit you for 16 uh, and it's a bit of a, tr a bit of a problem. So I'll let the Lurkers deck stand. Uh, we'll ban the uh, ban the Fizz. All right all right let's let's just start with the spiders. Go pretty pretty comfortable taking that up against any of his deck and I fully expect pretty much every opponent to just come in and ban pirates I don't think that that's going to be uh too surprising today all right no real one drops we got to get rid of everything a deck tracker not up where you at deck tracker oh my gosh life is hard Let's see if that'll come up along the way here now so okay let's lead off with the rear guard uh not too many one drops coming from them. It would have to be the likes of the uh, Stinky Wump, which you don't see too commonly. Oh, so many Legion rear guards. God, really, I really like spending time with that guy. He's such a he's such a good fella. And so with this, like we can technically blank his board with a block, right? We can play the Imperial Demolitionist and get in front of this. I, I'm just not super interested in that. I really just plan on opening next turn. And so let's just go ahead and uh, let that happen. We'll start playing our other one drops here. Maybe we don't want to open next turn. I don't like that. Continue to add the ones. It's like if he plays like the the way the place it's bad is if he plays Caitlyn, right? But I guess like Caitlyn isn't horrible, in that he can um, he gets a value block, but doesn't get to like play a burn spell or anything. Picking up the onlooker, I'm okay with just uh, bam, like slamming in now. Ooh, okay. Okay. Squad. That was a bit of a, a preemptive mystic shot. He could have played that in the middle of combat. So, looking pretty good here. We got the, the two burn in hand. He's already down to six. Should be able to close this out pretty reasonably. Boomed him. All right. Game one in the books. The spiders are doing it. I have a lot of confidence in Darius Nar. We were kind of carrying this as a, uh, a a main lineup deck there for a few weeks. We were looking to just play these really overwhelm heavy decks when the, uh, when the Sun Disc was big in popularity. And so uh, I, I think this is a deck that gets uh, gets faded on a little bit. I think it's it's quite strong. Uh, but here, okay enough to hang on to the Yeti. The Omen Hawk is a little bit more questionable, but uh, this is, a, again, like a deck that shouldn't be com combating with our early game stuff that well. Just going to play the Rear Guard instead. Turns out he does more damage than the Omen Hawk. I did, I did the mathematics on it. Uh, the, the damage is greater coming out of the Legion Rear Guard. Sure. Battle step. 
Nice. So we get in the extra point of damage that way. He blocked the Overwhelm unit, so we still get in for a point of damage. He could have stopped a full three on the Legion Rearguard, but chose not to. Hmm. Shouldn't have to worry too much about the Flashbang Traps next turn. Since his unit only has one health, uh, I'm just going to go ahead and start adding in our one health units. We can still drop the Ancient Yeti next turn. Um, but we get more damage on board uh, with the width, I do believe. Two attack fragment? Again, these can be pretty relevant. Do we just slam it now? Like, we can play the Ancient Yeti cheaper. I like this. We'll, we'll just go ahead and, and, and Blade Fragment the Omen Hawk. We'll get the Ancient Yeti down cheaper in a turn or two. So he can either block the 5-4 the and take a point of damage to get it off the board, uh, or he can take a value block to try and prevent a bit in the future. Chunking so much in. This is looking pretty good. We get to play double Overwhelm on this turn and then open with the Whirling Deaths next turn. Whoa! Whoa! <laughs> oh, I did that math wrong. We can play the Yeti, but can't play the Ballista. I am so used to just uh, everything with the Flashbang Traps going 100% wrong. Uh, I should probably delete this video. I don't, I don't want people getting getting the impression that uh, the, the Flashbang Traps can go properly against us. It's just, it's just not right. People got to know how much trash I talked about those things. There we go. There we go. That's more like it. <laughs> That's what we're used to seeing. Overwhelm fragment. Good. That's that's more par for the course. Okay, okay. <laughs> well, let's see what he brings at us. If he, you know, plays like a bunch of mana for a Karina or something, we, we should be pretty safe to just end. The Whirling Death will, will chunk through four damage through the Wump. Mystic Shot. That's not going to do it, my dude. G G. So yeah, I was also thinking, and you know, coming out here, bringing the full burn lineup. I know some people out there, the their biggest goal in life uh, isn't with fun. It's with uh, it's with just getting the highest rank that you can, whether or not that's jumping up into into platinum or gold or whatever. Uh, if that's what your thing is, the the next few days are a, a pretty choice few days to just bring the burn decks. Once the new patch comes out, you got to wait until Wednesday or so. But when everybody's out there trying to have fun with the new cards and play with elites and reputation and stuff, and you're just like, "Cool, I'm just gonna play pirates." <laughs> it's a it's a it's a pretty good time to to push your ranks up uh, if that's what's important to you. Uh, but here with this lineup, uh, I'm going to want to ban the uh, the the Trundle Lissandra control decky kind of thing. Uh, we do have decentish matchups against the Sun Disc with the uh, the Darius Nar, and uh, I'm not like amped if this is some kind of like AOE centric uh, Sejuani deck, but it's going to be a better matchup than playing against Trundle Lissandra. Comes the Pirate Span, sure. Let's lead with Elise again. Didn't get the matchup we were wanting. I was hoping to uh, to, to get the run into the other. Uh, get to take Darius Nar into the uh, the Sun Disc deck, but this is okay. We got a we got a pretty powerful start here. This is tough. This is one of these spaces where I'm not a hundred percent certain on how I enjoy this. As to where the, there's two things with this turn, right? The absolute highest damage board that we can produce is the two one drops, but uh, we can't get some work going with Elise. It's just at the end of the day, his common play here is going to be Rock Hopper, right? So he's going to play Rock Hopper and just trade with our Elise. Then we're going to miss out on a couple points of damage. But the the place where this like starts to get interesting is we really want to spend all of our mana every turn of the game, and there's a very good chance we go into next turn and we're unable to. Uh, to spend the three mana if we just have this handful of two drops. And so I'm going to go with the Elise. Uh, 
the other kind of positive to the Elise is if he plays Rockhopper, then we get to deal with the Roiling Sands with the Spiderling token. But he doesn't have a play, so we miss out on some damage, unfortunately. But uh, I think that was going to be a, a bit of a disaster if, if we don't get to spend all of our mana this turn. Okay, let's just go ahead and drop the rear guard. I think there is a chance that he just doesn't attack here. Um, and if he comes in and hooks our Elise, then we have some other other options we can go for. This is actually quite fine. Shape stone, sure. Alright, not gonna open. I wanna I wanna get the, the full board here. Just uh what's he gonna do? Like play a Zerath this turn? That's that's not very exciting. We just need to, to slam through all of this. I guess Renekton would be a little unfortunate. Duder's playing some Renekton's here, but uh, still just gonna go for the damage. Okay, so we won't attack with the little spiderling, because uh, Elise is gonna generate one. Everything else is coming right in. Okay. Take him to four. Decimate range, as people like to call it. <laughs> the the decimates are no guarantee against this deck, right? They tend to play right of negations. And so uh, it's not, not a guarantee just to slam the decimate and call it a day. But I feel pretty good about it. All right, what you do when Scotty bringing in Azir? Sure thing. He can't play Desert Duel anymore, but he can do stuff like a uh, play an Exhaust. Some of these Renekton decks will will play it. I, I don't think we're gonna see it here, but there it is. Get to watch that Renekton video. <laughs> Please, please bring it upon me. I want to see some cutscenes. Going to play a second one so he can get an Azir hook. Clever. He's doing it. Okay. I don't know why he's taking down the Spiderling, but I'm not, I'm not upset about it. They don't have any way to just deal point of damage. I think the, the block under the Sand Soldier is safe enough. Yeah, show me the movie. Yeah, I want to see it so bad. <laughs> okay, and I'm going to overwrite with the precious pet. Just go for the, the maximum damage next turn. Here we go. I'm ready to attack. So we do have to worry about the likes of quicksand here, but... Uh, I mean, this is, this is Dever... Never a question as to what's happening this turn. So, I mean, with the quicksand, we still have lethal. So he's going to need a little bit more than that, right? He can minus two attack our two, our two attack units, and we have the three and the one still coming in for four. Gotta have something else, my dude. Ripperino. Nice. Okay. GG. Market a W for Elise. He says, don't forget me. Don't forget, don't forget the foundations. <laughs> hey, cool. So yeah, against the Sundust deck with Darius Nar, we used to, well, not used to, we still do. We, we'd talk about the way to beat it. You can't just put a bunch of stats on the board. You either have to uh, attack around it with Elusive. And that's where you would see the uh, uh, Elusives with Yordles in Arms and the Ambush kind of meta. You have to attack through it with Overwhelms like we're doing here. That's what you also see with like Talia Ziggs. Uh, or uh, you have to just, just try and burn it out. 
or attack twice, I'm sorry. Uh, but here, I don't like the, the concept of Rune Weaver against this deck. It can't uh, attack and chunk through for damage, right? So if we're attacking into a um, attacking into a Rock Hopper, then he can just block it for the full amount of damage, but uh, not not a incredibly awesome play when we already have the two Ruthless Raiders. Just go ahead and run out these tough speakers. I don't think we're going to run into too many too many places where the tough is relevant here. Uh, and so I'm just going to get the most damage on the board as quickly as we can. wonder how intimidated he is by our premium Legion rearguards. That was a little preemptive, but it <laughs> doesn't change anything. We're still bringing the squad. Get that point of damage in. All right, get some serious width now. Let me hear you call our Emperor's name. Please. To hear your it is can, we, can we just lethal? Lethal next turn? Where are we at? I don't like the trade here with the Golden Ambassador because we don't deal any damage, right? If we let the Ambassador sit around and then he gets a, a single block on it next turn, uh, th then we get to uh, chunk in an extra point of damage. Here I'm going to go for the Whirling Death. Uh, he can't play anything that's too worrisome. And so uh, I want to have the, the Whirling Death ready on this board. Slam it right into this Renekton. He can have a, a shaped stone here. He, we got to see that in the previous game. It's not something the Sun Disc decks usually play. Uh, this dude is. And so. Okay. It's a little a little preemptive, I do believe. Takes him to four, so we're just gonna lethal. Perfect. They call that exacties. Oh, it's only 13. Oh, that's right. We didn't have the, the full damage through Renekton. Okay. I got you. So we got him to one. I'm just so used to that, uh, that, that four damage completing the deal. Okay. We're still looking pretty hot. Give us the chance to play Battle Fury. <laughs> that's, that's, uh, that's the most important part to this game. Nasus? Where the fuck Nasus come from? Oh, he's just not playing. I didn't. I just assumed this other champion was uh, was Zerath this whole time. Okay. No blocks. You know, you don't have to worry about a. Uh, don't have to worry about an atrocity coming through. He's Mono Shuriman, the driver of the cars. All right. Here's the squad. Oh, Spirit Fire is not enough, my dude. Not enough. Gotta start emoting. Oh man, I wanna I'm gonna battle fury. I'm still doing it. Fuck this Nasus. We're gonna <laughs> Get out of here, son. Get out of here, dog. Nobody wants to see that shit. <laughs> nice. G G. All right, on to the next one. Fastest video 2022. This shit's popping. <laughs> okay, so this is one of the lineups that is uh, a little bit problematic for us, right? Um, as we were talking about earlier, uh, if you're running into this lineup to where there's two decks that can be a problem... Uh, then we don't have, you know, the good ban. And so here, we need to either ban Aphelios Victor or we need to ban Scouts. Both of those are pretty not good matchups. Uh, and so I'm just going to ban the uh, the Aphelios Victor. And, you know, maybe we'll get to beat Pantheon twice. Uh, we, we can run into that as to where 
uh, Scouts comes out here. We lose to Scouts because that matchup's kind of uh, coin flippy in their favor. But we should be decent against uh, against uh, Pantheon. Now, the, the downside against Pantheon is our Darius Nar deck is actually kind of weak there. And so uh, not amped about how this, this matchup has come together, but... Oh, he bans Darius Nar. Interesting. Not what I expected to see. I thought he was gonna gonna take out the pirates. But all right, let's lead off with Elise again. I wonder if he's got that bust tech in there. He's playing the Radiant Guardians uh, to, to to give yourself a bit of an edge in this match. All right, so if he's going to play a, a challenger bird on the first turn, who do we care the most about? I, I think we want to just drop the rear guard. Um, it, it does get into a space to where um, uh, he, he might, you know, not have the turn one play and then just have like a smaller unit on turn two. There's definitely a world where he can get into combat with like a one health unit. And then also... Uh, uh, we might get this point of damage in with the Legion Saboteur. So missing out on a point of mana this turn, it's kind of sucky. To a Bright Steel. Okay. I'm attacking. The squad is coming in. And a Fleet Feather Tracker? Oh, fuck. This game's done. Oh, it's so bad when you can't attack with your dudes. I mean, we can bring him. It's just like if we start to attack with the smaller units, he can be like, yeah, just take the four and then get the value blocks onto your twos. Oh, this is so bad. Okay. Can't another turn not being able to spend mana. Fuck. <laughs> yep. I wonder if he ever passes here. Kind of kind of dangerous playing it like this. Okay. Uh. And man, we have dealt zero points of damage this game. That is not good. <laughs> That is not good, my friends. Alright, let's get this Doom Beast busted. Okay, this, this one's done. This one's done. But I, I do feel a, a non-zero amount of confidence in that we can just beat Pantheon twice. Um, kind of surprised to see that he didn't open with Pantheon, but it's certainly doable here. Or actually, I mean, I'm surprised he didn't just ban pirates, since uh, I I think Darius Nar struggles a bit with the with the likes of Yumi Pantheon. Ooh, these are expensive. Give me give me one of them ones, please. Uh oh, oh my gosh, this match is <laughs> everything has been a disaster in this one. Come on, one, come off the top. Fuck. Okay. Uh, that's not good. That's not good. His standard play here would be Mountain Goat. So let's try and force a trade into it. If we play the House Spider, uh, we don't get to attack with the one cost unit, or the one one unit. Uh, this has been bad. This this draw was a disaster. To Wounded White Flame. We're just gonna have to take the damage from it this turn. Uh, it's, it's just like, do we want to build up to a Noxus Blast for it? We can technically Noxus Blast it this turn, but he does have the gem in hand, and so if he just slaps the gem down, then we're in trouble. Uh, so, I'd assume he's gonna slap the gem down. Okay. And then we just have to try and attack around this stuff the rest of the way. I, I like to be fairly conservative in taking this damage. Oh my god, what a fucking disaster of a draw. Uh, because they, they tend to go, like, overwhelm mode on you. But um, we're not able to do that here. Uh, 
okay. Got him to 13. Have to get some width. Like, that's the, the thing. We, we can't just sit here on this board with just two dudes. We have to be able to attack around this stuff and then just burn it after. Oh, this fucking draw. Okay. Okay. Uh, does the, the Legion Saboteur is going to represent the most damage. So let's pick that one up. We can go ahead and drop Doom Beast here, but I'm not going to block anything. Alright, got him to 11. Zenith Blade, absolutely. So if he blocks our two bigs, we're getting in for four next turn, so we'd be one short uh, on this Nox and Fervor plan. Now we pick up Decimate. We could go about it that way, but I think I just want to get another dude on board. We can at least lead with the Stalking Shadows and see what we hit, uh, and hopefully we can get two guys down. Onlooker technically represents the most damage, but he can of course just come out and block it. Let's go with the Demolitionist. So we can play the Ephemeral Demolitionist this turn along with the Legion Saboteur. And then next turn we can try and burn him out. The only way that, the only way that this starts to be bad, if he's like Herder, here's Pantheon, and, <laughs> and then he gets to hit uh, for, for a big point of damage. But it doesn't look like he's quite able to, to pull that off this turn. Ephemeral, okay. Now, he could potentially have another unit here, but uh, it's not something I would typically expect out of this deck. He has a rally. Oh, fuck. Can we kill through that? I mean, we have to attack. He blocks the three at the right. We still have lethal. Okay. Ooh, we're one short, aren't we? <sighs> okay. Yep. That was just like the that was just like super super low rolls. Like you, you can't have those games to where you miss out on the mana that early. Uh, that's what happens. But man, I, I really felt like we would be able to beat that Pantheon deck twice. But that that's just that's the way it happens when you. Hard mulligan for ones and miss, and then you have this weird draw with the Stalking Shadows and Noxus Bless. But, moving on, moving forward, uh, this weird seeing Bandle City attached to this action, uh, this action Zillion. Uh, I, I do worry a bit about that one having uh, some some scary time bomb -y kind of cards, but I think we're just going to come in and ban, uh, ban out the Shadow Isles deck. That's most certainly the kind of thing that likes to come out here and play uh, vile feasts. So here, uh, I'm curious what he brings first. If people just bring the deck on the left, then I want to be playing pirates. I really want to have Darius Nar lined up for uh, the Sun Disc deck. But let's lead with pirates and see if he plays his one on the left. You got to start with the one on the left, right? It's weird seeing people ban. Uh, Ban Elise as opposed to banning uh, pirates. What's going on, Riot? Get it together. All right. <laughs> Things are better now. Okay, got a got a couple of ones. We can party with that. Nice little curve. And he did bring the sun disc on us. Interesting. So many Shuriman cars out there today. But we'll lead with the Precious Pet. They usually don't play one drops, but uh, you shouldn't be able to block the pet if we lead with it. I don't think I've seen a... Uh, uh, the the guy that generates five twos. I don't think I've seen that in the Shuriman decks in, in quite a while. Or in the Sundisk decks, I should say. It's quite common in the various... Uh, the, the, the various decks featuring... Uh, action. There we go. The the term came to me. It just took a while. Nothing but the stink of glory and sweat. 
All right, let's get this misfortune down. Decent chance we'll just come out and attack with her. Oh, he spent. He had to spend mana crystal on that. Wow. Okay. That has to feel disastrous. Misfortune doesn't seem like that important. Like if you're playing scouts, then I might understand that. But that's wild against these decks. What are you gonna do for three mana now? So how do we feel about Twisted Fate here? I, I think it's okay if we come in and and red card, and then he just trades his 2-2 into Twisted Fate. That doesn't seem terrible. We get to two for one his units off of the board and then have a big attack next turn. Get a point of damage in as well. Lots of relevant stuff happening there. I love relevant stuff happening. <laughs> Sure. Okay, so do we open here? Um, we get in for, say, 4 damage, take him to 10, and then we have uh, 9 damage of burn in hand. I'm not opposed to it. It's like, how, how bad is it if he plays Zerath this turn? Uh, are we in, like, a much different spot? I think, well, that's kind of okay. It's like if he plays Zerath, we still get in for four damage, right? He blocks the two one with the the Soothsayer, blocks the Precious Pet, and we get in with the Crackshot Corsair and Zap. Also puts another Nox and Fervor in our hand, though. I think that's okay. Because in this in this world where he doesn't have Zerath, this feels pretty good. I guess he could play, like, the Rock Bear Maker onto his Sun Disk. Like, that seems like a, a real play. But, okay. This is better. He can he can put his Rock Hopper in front of the Precious Pet, but he loses his unit. It's perfect. So we get in for the same 4 damage, but he loses his board. What's his, what are his counts at? Two for Zerath and then ten summons on the Azir. I don't really want to play any more units this game if we don't have to, but we'll see. We'll see what he brings out. Okay. Uh, not dropping, not dropping the demolitionist now. I mean, I guess we can. Maybe we do. He only has one mana. Zerath's not gonna flip. That only gets him up to three ticks. Yeah. For the Empire. Then we'll, we're we're representing lethal next turn. Uh oh, did we fuck that up? Oh, we fucked that up though. Shit. We just lost out on the two points of damage. Uh oh. Should have, definitely should have hit Zap. I, I had in my in my brain piece that that, uh, that damage was incoming, but... Whoops. Alright. We still win. <laughs> At least you, you got a learning moment. You got a learning moment there. Those are the kind of things I'll talk about, man. Like, a, a little mistake like that. It seems very innocuous and tiny, but... Uh, making a little one like that with an aggro deck is what'll lose you the game. Uh, that's what I, I've talked about, you know, kind of, kind of excessively in terms of. Uh, I, I think people really over overestimate the uh, the amount of skill it takes to pirate a control deck, just because they're so forgiving. Like uh, if you play the wrong removal spell, it oftentimes just doesn't matter. But uh, that you know, putting the the damage on the wrong unit there could have very easily just lost us that game. All right. Well, we got this one. We were not hard punished for our mistake. Good. Uh, 
by Darius Nar. Let's get to battle. Nobody gives you nobody gives you the respect you deserve. Makes me feel sad, my man. I wonder if Darius will ever catch a catch a rework. Uh, now that we're seeing all these champion updates and things coming, I think most of the stuff in the, this upcoming patch is like tweaks, right? They they did list off like twenty cards or something that were going to be changed, but I think they're just doing the reworks to that really small selection of champions. This isn't a match where we want Rune Weaver. It can go. Uh oh, oh gosh, this is how this is how you lose to the Sun Disk. That is a shitty start. All right, well, the, the Rune Weaver is here for redemption, at least. Oh, my God. These draws. What are the chances we go into next turn and just can't play any cards? That's actually, like, wonderful for us that he, he passed there. Um... Uh, it did give us the opportunity to whirling death. We're not going to take it now that uh, now that we drew a ruthless raider, but that had some that had some serious potential for us to like having to whirling death that dum dum. Now we don't have to be like super greedy with these attacks. We, we do have a lot of just like overwhelm power in our hand. I think we can just pass with a bank here. Don't have a, a lot of good options with that turn. Now we can pretty safely start to make Whirling Death plays and fun stuff like that. I'd love to make a sweet Battle Fury play here, but not quite in the cards. In this timeline, we're sure to save Surprised he's not taking down our Rune Weaver. That's very strange to me. Where's the Xerath? Six landmarks. Xerath has one. Okay. Interesting. I'll take everything. All right, that was, I was just thinking in my head, is like, is this going to be a shaped stone? Is this going to be one of these shaped stone bros taking down our Ruthless Raider? It's not. But this should be pretty good. Wouldn't be surprised to see him just take the eight damage. Uh, but we're getting lined up for a huge turn next turn. Like, I, I would feel really exceptionally good if he would burn a... Uh, if he would burn a quicksand early. Doesn't, he doesn't seem like he's going to, but if he would, you know, come in and prevent this damage here so that we could get the big decisive maneuvers overwhelmed next time, be pretty sweet. I think he he might have it. It looked like he was kind of thinking on if he wanted to give the uh, give the the yeti the minus four attack so that it doesn't kill his unit and doesn't deal any damage that turn. That's what it kind of looked like to me. Quick attack. All right. Lulz. <laughs> Our Ruthless Raider. I'm not sure how this works here. Does it go to a, a random one at that point? Since they have the both, they have the same attack and health, they both have the same cost. I don't know if it goes left to right or goes to random. Can't block is almost more interesting than Darius. Weakest enemy can't block, so it would just go on to Azir. Hmm. Eh. I mean, I guess there's there's two ways to look at this, right? He's number one. He's going to do something here. He's not passing with eight mana. Uh, ancient hourglass. Okay. Is he going to flip? No. It's like we. We have uh, just a few options in Ancient Prep. And, the like, number one, we can Battle Fury this turn, right? We can bring a Battle Fury down. Uh, 
we I, I'm getting like further and further away from wanting to play Fallen Reckoner. Um, he does have a pretty full board, but then he's going to have the opportunity to like uh, he, he's going to go to like three ticks on Zerath, and if he has the four damage, blow up a landmark thing, th then we're just fucked. Like we have to be opening here. But with uh, nine mana, where does that leave us? I think like we're going to look to Whirling Death Decisive Maneuver because I feel like we're probably not going to win the game this turn. But uh, we need to like kill some of this stuff. I guess the, the beauty in eight mana is we could also potentially just Battle Fury out of this as well. But I'm pretty sure this is going to be like a quicksand onto Darius' turn. Oh, you just drawing cards? That seems positive. I wanted to watch the movie. <laughs> can you destroy another landmark so we can watch the whole fucking movie? I mean, that is one of the great things about this patch, right? This has been a pretty good patch. Uh, if our biggest complaint is watching the Sharma movie, <laughs> then it's gone, it's gone pretty well. All right. The game thing says we're still lethal at this point. Um, hasn't... I think he's looking to move... Like, make a decision on blocking our Rune Weaver. There's the quicksand. Is Battle Fury Darius lethal? That's one one short, isn't it? Where do we get though if we if we battle fury the ruthless raider right say he comes down puts Zerath in front of our five attack unit then we get a bunch of overwhelm damage with our darius now he's going to grow up to plus four that's going to be a lethal right okay it says neg 20 now that should do it he doesn't have anything for two mana Watch them animations, bruh. Darius movie coming at you, fucking dunking it. <laughs> nice. Ripperino, my dude. You got Darius. So cool, getting up into that final battle. I knew we had it on us. I knew we could do it. So let's see. Push the button. Get in there. Give me that bonus EXP. God, I need some more dust. <laughs> Man, I was thinking, though, like, uh, Dr. L.O.R. posted a, a tweet or something the other day about, uh, well, I guess it was Legna. Is Legna the one that, uh, is another one of the dude that does the data science stuffs? But um, it was, like, uh, talking about Bay and the point at where he, like, got hit rank one with the Sun Disk deck or something and the popularity, like, re-spiked and it went huge. Uh, kind of, like, one of my things with that is... We, we've talked, like, quite a bit uh, about the Echo Zillion deck, and uh, the deck's just pure garbage. He used it and hit rank one with it, like, congratulations. But um, there, there was, like, a skill that you used to have to have as a, an old magician, as a boomer bust is dropping the stories on you. But, like, you, you would, you know, you would go around to your Star City games, uh, and you would have to, like, read an article and determine if the stuff in the article was legitimate. And so if it was like, you know, someone had actually sat around and like played games with the deck or took it to some actual tournaments or did, you know, something that would have you believe that it wasn't, you know, number two, which was an advertisement, right? These dudes work for Star City. And so if Star City says, hey, you know, we need to move some of this card. How about you write an article about it? You say, sure. Thank you for making my paycheck. I'll make this sound wonderful. And then uh, thing number three, which is relevant in terms of uh, the Echo Zillion deck, is the person piloting the deck is just better than everyone else they're playing. Uh, and I, you know, I, I'm not really in tune with 
uh, you know, the top 10 players in the world. But I, I wouldn't be surprised if uh, if Majin Bay sat in the top 10 or if he sat in the top 20. And, you know, that, that's just like a pretty big edge against everyone else. If, you know, the, the top 20 players in the world are spread out across the servers, or I'm sure some of you are going to say, like, her Dur, you has the top 10 of those 20 or whatever. I don't really care. But uh, for in large part, he's just way better than all these other people that he's playing against. And uh, that's why you see decks like Echo Zillion uh, run to the top of the ladder. It's not that it's a good deck. He's just better than all these people. And so, you know, where Boomer Bust is circling back on this is you used to have to spend a lot of money on this stuff, right? If you're, you still do if you're playing Magic, but if you run out there and, um, you know, buy two and three hundred dollars of Magic cards and then travel to a tournament and maybe have to get a hotel and pay a fifty dollar entry fee, you could like very seriously and legitimately be out like three, four, or five hundred dollars on what was essentially an advertisement that you just read. And so you had to like really piece together, uh, you know, is this like legitimate technology that I'm going to have to encounter? Should I be playing these cards and stuff? And now that, that that's kind of like fallen off now that trackers are a thing, you can see that it's like, okay, well, you know, Mage and Bay just hit rank one uh, with Echo Zillion. And then I go and look at the, uh, the past three days win rates with this thing and it's sitting at like 45% and it doesn't have a positive win rate against like any deck in the match, any deck in the meta, except like Sundisk. <laughs> it's just like, maybe this isn't a, a good deck. And so, you know, he's not advertising anything, right? Uh, well, to a degree, he's not, he's not selling you cards. He might sell you a Team Liquid shirt, and he might sell you a uh, a subscription to uh, Mastering Green Terra, but he, he's not like backed by a store, right? He's not pushing Echo cards on you, uh, and so you could probably you know safely eliminate that, and you could probably safely eliminate you know through the uh, the, the uh, mathematics that the deck isn't good. So that just kind of leaves you in the space to where he's just better than everybody else, <laughs> and I think that that's a it's probably a pretty close assessment, but. Uh, that that is kind of where uh, some of these skills don't come around as much, and I do really appreciate the work that uh, that Dr. Eloir and Legna and Balco and the the data sciencey dudes do, because uh, it lets you get kind of you know a good meta snapshot picture without having to be like super in tune in the format. And it's so nice that uh, the game is so free to play friendly, or if you do spend money on it, it's not uh, an overwhelming uh, burden. And so. That's just one of those things I was thinking about over the weekend. I saw some of those tweets, and I, uh, I, I couldn't get that lengthy of a response in a tweet. And so <laughs> that's, uh, that's where that came from. Uh, but here, this is a pretty easy ban on the Sentinels. You know, we, we talked about the things that were problems for us. Uh, that's these decks that play like Vile Feast and Withering Whales and Piercing Darkness isn't a card that we ever want to see. Uh, and all of that shit lives here in the uh, in the Sentinels deck. So we'll ban it. Uh, we've been having, you know, pretty reasonable success against the Sun Disk, so I'm happy enough to leave it around. And uh, I, I'm not sure where things stand uh, against the, uh, the Rumble Discard deck. But I would feel like that's much more of a coin flippy kind of thing, and I'd definitely rather take a coin flip against Rumble as opposed to play against this horrible matchup in Sentinels. And so that's where the ban goes. Uh, and I'm gonna I'm gonna lead off with the pirates again. Uh, I, I'm not sure how these you know people decide how they want to do things, but I would ideally uh, get to take Darius Nar against the Sun Disk. Uh, I'm a little less confident in taking Darius Nar against. Uh, 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 against the, the Rumble deck. But alright, let's hang on to this one and this two. Much better, much better. Not one of these weirdo starts to where we can't play our cards. <laughs> such, such disaster. And with this, uh, I'm going to lead with the Legion Saboteur. Again, this isn't a deck to where we should be seeing a one drop. Uh, the Legion Saboteur does more damage than the Precious Pet. And so... If you did have to worry about your opponent playing Treasure Seekers, Treasure Hunter, whatever that 2-1 is called, uh, then you'd consider the Precious Pet. Not the case here. All right, I was like, he's thinking about playing a 1, and he's stopped for a long time. It's like, is this dude really going to drop it on us after we made that uh, uh, after we made that big assessment that he's not going to have it? <laughs> cool. I appreciate it, my dude. Make me make me look like the uh, the professional that I am. All right, the damages have been done. What you got a rock hopper? Sure. The 
the block has been made. Okay, and so how do we feel about this misfortune? Like, we, we run into a bit of trouble this turn with the Clockling, but, I mean, she should be safe. They they're, they're units, they don't play any units other than uh, Rockhopper that could contest her this turn. And so I think she's safe. Like, if he plays Rockhopper, it just dies to the Misfortune Boom. Uh, and so if he plays Azir, it's not big enough to take her down. I, I think this is all well and good. We can run into, like, some problems if we try and make this, like, Precious Pet Legion of Grenadier, right? The uh, the Clockling always has a good block on the Grenadier. Oh, cool, he does have the, the Rock Hopper. Prevent the three. It's going to drop a Shape Stone. I'm pretty sure Shape Stone isn't a, isn't a very common, uh, common card coming out of these. Cool. Let's bring the booms, Miss Fort. He is playing Treasure Seeker. Wow. Wow. Okay. Not what I expected. Well, let's start with the Grenadier. If he wants to come in and trade with one, this is fine. He can get the boom on our dude. Uh, it does give us a pretty safe open for the next turn. So, I, I, I think... I'm really suspect when these decks uh, come in and take these vulnerable attacks, right? This is one of the concepts we, we saw much more frequently in Expedition, but it was certainly relevant in the uh, the Bandal City era of things as to where, uh, you know, is, is your opponent able to fill out a board before you're able to, right? Our deck, we could realistically play like a precious, a, uh, a, an Elise, or we could play uh, the the two cost spider that makes another spider. You know we can realistically completely fill out our board, whereas our opponent here probably cannot. So always kind of interesting to see that way. Rai Warden was a good draw. I, I'm looking to uh, Nox and Fervor away whatever he blocks with the endless devout. Keeps the sarcophagus off of the board. Gets that extra couple points of damage in. Uh, keep him from. Trying to get this thing to flip. Do I change our mind? Oh, he can probably pretty realistically just play another card. So we're only going to get in for two damage this attack. Kind of sucks. Do we go for the... Where does this take him? Takes him to nine. And we've got seven in hand. He loses the dude. Alright, maybe we should just get Precious Pet down. We can, like... Maybe what we can do is, like, on his turn, we can drop a Decimate uh, after he's had the chance to spend some mana. So th this is starting to get, like, a little scary. If he has a Desert Naturalist to blow up the Sarcophagus, we're going to be in a bit of trouble here. But if he's just doing dumb Zerath stuff, then we'll be fine. Okay, the Zareth hit will go onto the Yeti Yearling, so we should be safe to drop the Imperial Demolitionist onto uh, onto Misfortune. Save save our bro from that point of damage. <laughs> Got him to seven. Gonna have the uh, the burn spell as well. Does this counter spell it? I'm not familiar with this interaction. It does not. He still gets the he still gets the unit out of it. So how bad is this? I I, I don't want to. Uh, I, I think we just have to let this happen. And then we play Decimate this turn and go for a Nox and Fervor in a future turn. Like, I, I want... While we have the opportunity to, to get our maximum damage spell in, I, I want to, to get it in. 
And so if he um, if he does have the the right of negation in hand, then we still have an opportunity uh, to draw a little bit more damage. Okay. All right, Zap. Well, Zap will draw us a uh, a Noxus Blast. Well, it could be a Make It Rain, I guess. Mm. All right. Face it. <laughs> do, you, do you got the uh, do you got the counter spell? Does. All right. It's kind of lame. It's what you are, dude. Kind of lame. I'm <laughs> put, I'm putting it out there. So this will blow up a unit, and we're we're just like coin flipping here though, on hitting the Noxus Blast, hit the Make a Drain. Fuck. Okay. Well, I guess that might uh, that might help us get there though. We get in for two with Zap, and then have a Make a Drain for the extra point of damage. The possibilities are endless. All right. Kind of lame, dude. Kind of lame. Do uh, I'm trying to think if we ever want to just like make it rain now, uh, to to try and take him to two. Uh, it's relevant for. I, I think we need to. It's it's relevant for um, Imperial Demolitionists. Right, I don't want to need a point of damage, and he adds a dum dum to the board that we can't uh, can't to take our percentages down. Uh oh, are we gonna kill him with a hexite crystal? Can this stupid card hit face? Hits it to the nexus, gives us another opportunity. <laughs> I love a good opportunity. Come on, deck. There's a Nox and Fervor. Let's see what he does. Like, I, I can't imagine he's gonna, like, pass down below. We should probably just play it right now. I, I don't like that he's out here just drawing cards and stuff. We might get seriously punished for doing it this way. But we probably should have just opened with it. Nice. Nice. Good job, burn deck. You had me... You had me squeezing that bee hole a little bit there. <laughs> I feel I feel much better when we just have like a positive matchup with Darius Nar and then a uh, probably a coin flip uh, against uh, the Rumble deck. Okay, okay, Whew, that's close. Another thing I had happen in my life today. Today, I purchased uh, 120 pounds of shit. I never thought that that was going to be uh, something I ever said. You know, I didn't think that that was going to be on the old uh, the the old bust things that he's done. That's a that's a hundred kilo for you, uh, you people that don't use freedom units. It's a little bit more than a hundred kilo, but uh, uh, <laughs> I'm sorry, I have my I have my numbers wrong. We got over 200 pounds of cow shit. We got. I think it was eighty. It was forty pound bags, and I think we got uh, eight of them, so that would be three hundred and twenty. Nonetheless, I was not purchasing, planning on purchasing that much shit at any point in my life. Uh, certainly pulled it off today. <laughs> so many turds in our backyard now, ready to grow all that food. But this game's going okay. And we get to, to chunk in a bit of damage. He's going to let the Omen Hawk do his thing. Looks good. So the 100 kilo is 225 pounds. You, you, you learn that one at the gym. <laughs> Whenever you hit that magical two-plate bench is when... Uh, when you know what the, the 100 kilo are. Do we ever just get to shut this thing down? 
kind of okay with this. Like, I'm curious what he actually does if we drop the, uh, the Iron Ballista here. Nothing. I dig it. So he does still have this Waking Sands in hand. Um, I, I'm, like, I'm never just, like, opening here. We're gonna play some units. It's a matter of, do we want to go for, like, the Tusk Speakers or the Omen Hawks or what? I think we want to double Omen Hawk plus Tusk Speaker. Uh, and then just let the Yeti continue to tick down. I think this is fine. Or if he adds, like, a Zerath and whatever, I think this is good as well. If he adds Zerath, then we'll switch to Ruthless Raider. But I'm envisioning these kind of turns to where uh, the, the Yeti just gets to gets to play on a big board. Or on a cheaper board. We could play, like, the Yeti and the Raider next turn. Or Well, Soothsayer's a little less ideal, but... I'm not going to let him just take the, the free block onto Tusk Speaker. Interesting. Didn't expect it to come this way. He's leaving the Rock Hopper behind to hook the Ballista next turn. Sure. Alright. Whirling Death is pretty cool. Do we want to protect this guy? And it's a very real question. You usually use these more offensively, but given what's in our hand, I think I'm okay with this. Because there's like a very real chance we want to play the unit that we draw next turn, right? Uh, we, we've played three Omen Hawks this game. I haven't like monitored them super closely, but I think we've hit two units, right? We've hit the Ballista. We hit the, the Raider. We hit something, whatever. And so we should have like a plus three, plus three unit as our next unit. Okay. Decisive maneuvers. Well. Not quite how I wanted that to go, but I think this is okay. Let's see if we run into quicksand here. You're getting stunned, my dude. Getting stunned. You are nothing. Say that to yourself, bruh. Say it to yourself. <laughs> so this is fine. If he has the right of negation, that's a, a pretty expensive play. If he doesn't have it or quicksand, then we just win the game. Look, we did it. We won the game. GG, go us. So, oof. Bring in the burn package. Getting a nice prime glory. Does this still count as prime glory? I thought prime glory was the first one you did on the week. But this little counter at the bottom right still continues to tick up as we see my glory total 10. And so... I guess they all just count. <laughs> but nonetheless, that is going to do it to us today. And so, hope everyone enjoyed the video. You learned how to uh, to burn them up just a little bit better. Maybe learned a thing or two along the way and had a good time watching. Uh, this is Bust, and we thank you for being here.